Alright guys, how's it going? Before I start this video, I just want to say that I have been busy this week with stuff that is related to the channel. I've got my very first ever interview done. The whole thing was a bit of a farce in all honesty, and it's actually amazing how much effort you have to put in simply to get the parts to do an interview well. Or maybe that's just in my case. I bought a new camcorder, I bought an audio recorder, I bought a couple of microphones, I also bought a tripod. I had everything basically all ready for the perfect interview. And uh, yeah, one or two little issues with the hardware turned it into a bit of a farce. Luckily, however, the interview ended up fine. At least I hope so. With a bit of luck, you'll see that at the end of the month. But for now, let's get on with this video. Right, so around about a month ago, I talked about benchmarking the next generation. That is, the next generation of graphics cards. Half of that next generation is here, kind of. The GTX 1080 and the GTX 1070 have launched, although they're not really in any kind of stock right now. If you actually go to this now in stock .net, computers, video cards, NVIDIA GTX 1080, you can see that, oh my god, there is actually one finally in stock, the Gigabyte at Newegg. I checked this five minutes ago and there was nothing in stock. Let's actually take a look and see. It's sold out. Right, now if we just go up here and change this 1080 to 1070, we can see that there are no 1070s in stock either. Now I did say that this was a paper launch and if you ever needed any proof of that, then nowinstock.net is it. I'm not affiliated with this website in any way. I'm just using it to check for the stock of these cards. Now, the reason I'm talking about the GTX 1070 is that in this benchmarking the next generation video, I said I was going to buy the GTX 1070 and Polaris 10, as I believed that those would be pretty decent competition. I'm not entirely sure how that looks right now. It does look like the GTX 1070 is going to be that bit faster. However, I still intend to get the 1070 and maybe some other cards as well. For the other graphics card team, that is AMD, the rumors point to the NDA lifting on Polaris at the end of June. And historically, when the non-disclosure agreement runs out, you can expect to see reviews of the cards pretty soon around that time. So all of this needs to be ready for at least the end of the month. The timing should be pretty decent because the GTX 1070 should hopefully be in stock by then. I'm not buying any of this Founders Edition crap, I'm just not doing it. But hopefully by the end of June, the partner cards will be available and AMD's Polaris will have launched by that time as well. Right now though, the important thing for me is to build the base system so that you can get an idea of what I might do in future. So this was making me think that what I want is the hexa core, six cores or more. And this was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do this Broadwell E, Intel's latest and greatest CPU, because this was the CPU, that is the 6800K, this was the CPU that I was intending in purchasing. But during this video, I did also say that that would depend on how well it overclocks. Well, sadly, it appears that Broadwell E is not a great overclocker. I didn't have access to the information at the time. However, now it appears to be confirmed on multiple websites. Broadwell E isn't quite so good as Haswell E when it comes to overclocking. It really depends on how far you want to push it. If you're only going to go to say maybe 4 gigahertz, then the Broadwell E is probably still a decent choice. Now Overclockers Club only had the 6950X, but as you can see here, they only reached 4.34 and apparently that is one of the better ones. So I will be quite surprised if the 6800K even reaches 4.5, but in actual fact, I was even more disappointed as the 6800K only appeared to get to around 4.4 on Tom's hardware. And not only that, but the power consumption goes through the roof. As soon as you go over 4 gigahertz, the overclock between 4 gigahertz and 4.4 is adding almost another 50% power consumption. Looking at these numbers, I wouldn't even bother going near 4.4. It's just simply not worth it. And looking at the temperatures should be more than enough to scare you off completely. From sub 60 temperatures at 4 gigahertz to over 80 degrees, at 4.4. This was on water by the way. So yeah, 6800K, fine at 4 gigahertz. I wouldn't want to go higher than that. And with it being a new CPU, it has a brand new price as well, almost £400 compared to the £314 of the 5820K. At those prices, the 5820K is a no-brainer. If you're choosing between those two, wait until this comes down in price. It's not even remotely worth the extra cost, so don't even think about paying it. Now I could rant about this all day, and the same about this Founders Edition crap, 
I was really looking forward to building these new systems. The new CPU with the new graphics cards, a new high-end system, maybe even a new $1,000 system. But these prices, this founder's edition nonsense has just completely put me off. Simply put, the way I see it is this. If I wouldn't buy it myself, I'm not going to go recommending other people buy it either. So when I do get around to updating my high-end system, chances are I'm going to be sticking with the 5820K just based on these prices and based on the fact that the 5820K is a better overclocker. For now though, what this means is I'm going to be going with the 6700K for myself. It made me think a bit more about it. The sort of graphics cards I'm going to be testing are now mid-range and below. Basically based on things like power consumption. Even your GTX 1080, not really a high-end card. We know it's a mid-range card at high-end prices. The 1070's got low power consumption and we know that Polaris is going to be low power consumption as well. These hexacores pretty power hungry and they really make the whole system draw a lot more power. So the 6700K is the one to go for for my current benchmarking system. Towards next year we'll certainly think about a Zen system and that will be used for my high-end graphics cards, the likes of your 1080 Ti and Vega. So I'm going with the 6700K. I said I would never buy another quad core but here I am buying another quad core. So now it's time to do a full rundown of all the parts of my new benchmarking system in turn. Right, so I'm going to start off with the case. One of my favourite cases is the Fractal Design Define R5. It comes in three different colours. You've got the black here, you've got the white, which is my personal favourite, and you have it in titanium as well, which is pretty nice too. And you can also get it with or without a side window. I really like the side window. However, the thing about this case is it's one of the quietest cases on the market. One of the reasons why it's so quiet is the soundproofing foam padding on the side panel. Now clearly if you're using the side window, you're not getting that. So this is really a choice that you have to make depending on whether or not the aesthetics or the noise is more important to you. I really do like it with the side window, but in my case, I am going to go for proper soundproofed version of the case. The reason I'm choosing this case is because if you remember, when I did the overview of the GTX 1080 reviews, one or two websites found that the card throttled quite heavily inside a case like this. And I believe that this is the sort of case that most people would be looking at getting. It's certainly a very popular case and one that should give you a much truer reflection of the expected gaming performance of your graphics card. So this is why I'm going for this. The last thing about the Fractal Design R5 though is that prices can really jump up and down quite a lot on it. Right now it's well above $100 in the US, but I've seen it way cheaper than that as well. Right now you can pick up a black one for $104, but if you don't want to pay over $100 for a case, you might want to check out something like the Thermaltake Suppressor instead. The F31, which is very similar, I believe they had a bit of an issue in fact because the case is so similar to the Define R5 but as you can see it's fully soundproofed as well and you can also get it without the window. Gaming edition at 75 and the silent edition at 86. So that's up to you if you want to check out something like this instead or if you want to wait a little while and see if the prices fall on the Define R5. This however will be my case of choice for the benchmarking system. Now moving on to the power supplies. One of the things I've noticed about power supplies on Amazon especially is instead of having an idea that you need maybe a 750 watt power supply and only searching for those, quite often that's not the best thing to do. If for example we do a search for the Corsair RMX series of power supplies, we can see here that the RM750X is $115 currently, but the RM850X is down at $110. Now clearly you would take the 850 over the 750. You've got the 550X at $100, so that's clearly really bad value. If the 550 costs 100, then obviously the 850 is well worth 110. And again, the 650X is at 120. That's no good. So this seems like a no-brainer here. The Corsair RM850X 850 watt fully modular power supply, 80 plus gold certified with a 10 year warranty at $110. Now the whole point in going for this 850 watt is that at some point I will be expected to do SLI and crossfire benchmarks. 850 watts is just about that little side of overkill but it also gives you that little bit of leeway if you do end up going with a couple of high-end graphics cards, maybe even three mid-range graphics cards. So yes, I do actually think that the 850 watt Corsair RMX is a very good choice here, especially given the current price. Over at Amazon.co.uk, we can see a similar story. 
106 pounds for the 850X and 104 pounds for the 750X. In a case like that, you're clearly going to pay an extra two pounds for the 850X. There are, of course, always ways to save more money here, though. The obvious one is you simply do not need more than, say, 600 watts if you're only ever going to be using a single graphics card. Something like this Cooler Master V650, 80 plus gold 650 watts, absolutely fine for any single card system and a good price at $84. Right now in the UK, this Antec True Power 750 watt 80 plus gold is a very nice price at £85. It's not modular though, so be aware that you've got a little bit of extra work there while installing it in the case. But if you want to save 20 quid on a very good power supply, then this is the one I would go for. In the end though, I have opted for the RM850X. Now, I already went over my reasons for choosing the i7-6700K this time instead of the 5820K or the new 6800K. Price is the main reason. Obviously, the 6700K is a blazing fast CPU as well, especially for gaming. It also uses a lot less power. And in all honesty, the main reason why I didn't choose it in my $1,000 build was six months ago, the prices were really far too high. This CPU cost more than the 5820K back then. That's why I chose the i74790K in my $1,000 build. Now though, at $341 for the 4790K, it's well worth paying an extra $14 for the 6700K, and that's what I'm going to do. I will of course be buying the UK version costing £281. Once again, keep an eye on prices here, because I've seen this as low as 265 and as high as 295 and that is in the space of this week alone. So you can definitely save money if you get it at a good time. Another reason I'm going for the i7 is that I already have a 2500K. There is no point whatsoever in me going for a 6600K. If however you're on a much older CPU, if you just want a good gaming CPU to last you a couple of years, then the i5 6600K is going to be more than good enough, especially after you overclock it up to similar speeds as the 6700K. As far as the motherboard goes, the needs are fairly simple here. Clearly I need an overclockable motherboard capable of SLI. Now, I don't really want to start here about having to pay more for an SLI motherboard, but this is something that I'm going to talk about in a future video. I had a look at all the SLI motherboards in a certain price range, and I came to the conclusion, basically mostly based on price, that the Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 3 motherboard is probably just about the best choice right now. Two-way SLI and three-way Crossfire compatible. It's a pretty good overclocker. I've heard one or two bad things about the bias though. The decision was mostly based on a very nice price of $140, SLI tax included. The same motherboard in the EU is called the Gaming 3 EU. £113 in the UK, it's got some kind of World of Tanks tie-in, and it's a very good looking board. An alternative option might be something like the ASUS Z170 Pro Gaming, but I'm gonna go with a Gigabyte. For the memory, I have opted for the Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3GHz C15 memory, and you can pick up 16GB of it for $70. To be frank, I am not a huge fan of Corsair memory, but right now, it's pretty cheap and fast, so it's just about worth the risk. And that's £64 in ripoff Britain. And it is, of course, fully compatible with a Gigabyte motherboard. Now, for my benchmarking system, I've decided on the Samsung 850 EVO 500GB SSD. Around about six months ago, I said that the 250GB was a sweet spot in terms of price. $88 for 250GB. But now the 500GB version is down in price quite a bit. $154. So this is now, I would say, the sweet spot in terms of cost per gigabyte. And one of these should certainly do most people. Unless you've got a bunch of videos saved. 500 gigabyte SSD, probably more than enough for most people. And with prices coming down constantly, you can always buy another one later. So this is what I'm going for now. In the UK, the price is £107, and with the 250 gigabyte being £70, the 500 gigabyte version is obviously much better value for money now. As you can see here, I already purchased one when I was also buying all of my recording equipment last week. In all honesty, if you want to save a bit of money, the SanDisk Ultra 480GB, absolutely fine solid state drive. If you're really hard up for the cash, you want to save $30, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this SSD whatsoever, I just really like the EVOs, and this is my third now. I now have a terabyte worth of Samsung EVO SSDs, but I would not hesitate to purchase a SanDisk Ultra 2, and may even go for one as a backup drive later. 
And the final part I am going to purchase today is the CPU cooler. Now I've had a look around for something different than simply going with the nocturnes every time, but I just can't justify anything else. It's not cheap, but you really do get what you pay for. And if you're going to be using a case like the Fractal Design R5, which is quite a hot case, then really high quality cooling can be such a big help. It is a massive cooler, but it does fit in the case. And to be frank, it is ugly as a pig. So if you really don't like the look of it, by all means, go for something like the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3. Similar kind of price, similar kind of performance, and it's a lot better looking. Another option might be the Fantex TC14PE, but for me, I'm going to continue recommending the Noctua, £70 in the UK. If paying all that money on a CPU cooler makes you shudder, then check out something like the Cryorig H7. It's a very good CPU cooler for the money, and supersedes something like the Hyper 212 EVO from Cooler Master. You can pick it up for well under half the price of the Noctua. Right, so that is pretty much it. The one and only thing left to buy is a graphics card and I'm gonna leave that one up to you for me as a benchmarking system. The graphics card is of course the thing that I will be swapping in and out most often. I'm gonna get the 1070, I'm gonna get one of the Polaris cards and I should be getting hold of a bunch of cards to compare them to. So look out for a lot of benchmarks at the end of the month. I have created many Adore TV benchmarking PC lists. Here's one for Amazon.com. All seven parts, you can just click on it, get straight to it. Amazon.co.uk, Amazon Canada, Amazon in Germany, and Amazon in France. It's the same parts in all of them, and it is of course using my Amazon affiliate links. The reason I now have five affiliate links is that people have asked me to create them for them, and these were the countries. So if you want me to make an Amazon link for your country, then just let me know about it in the comment or send me a message. But that will do that for this one. I have decided, if you guys want, I will build this PC and make a video of me building the PC. I've got the camcorder now, so I might as well do it. So I'm going to try to get all these parts ready for next week, and hopefully that will be a video towards the end of next week. And I'm also going to try to get one fitted in at the beginning of next week as well, so look out for that. But that will pretty much do it for this video. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you think I've made the right choice, if you think I've made the wrong choice, or whatever you think. I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of this and getting the benchmark started. I'll catch you later, guys.